let's set some stuff on fire with a grease pencil mini course. Now there are many different approaches to making 2D fire and what I want to do is just show you one way, frame by frame hand drawn animation with grease pencil. Now you might be thinking this is too difficult for you, but fear not, I've created a fun way to help us along. We're firstly going to create a particle system where we set it up to be flame-like. That's fun in itself, but we'll use this particle system as a template or a guide to help us with our hand-drawn animation. We're also going to make it loop and play around with some of the effects modifiers that come with Grease Pencil to make it glow and add some smoke. I'll also show you a few new tools that have been added to the Grease Pencil since our last tutorial. I also want you to know that it's okay to go your own way. Don't just copy what I do exactly in this tutorial. You can spend a lot more time cleaning it up and making it a lot smoother. Perhaps you don't like the dark pencil outline. That's fine, just turn it off in your render. Or maybe you don't like my colors. What about blue fire or green fire? The choice is yours. I want you to use this mini course as a starting point for creating your own fire. All right, are you ready? Good, let's go. All right, before we even start, let's have a look at my settings because my settings or my preferences could be a little bit different to yours. So I'm gonna open it up here and show you what buttons I'm using. So in my preferences, I'm using right click select. I'm using spacebar, which can brings up my tools uh, panel. And I'm, I've got this one checked on and the tab will control the pie menus. I'm mentioning this in case I say a, a hotkey and you press that same hotkey and it does something different. So just so you know, I, these are the settings that I'm using. So if you wanna follow along exactly with the buttons that I'm using um, and, and everything and all, make sure that you got these settings, but that's a personal preference. All right, let's start. So what I'm gonna do is delete everything, get out of my way, and then I'm gonna set up everything that I need for my particle emitter. So let's shift A, let's add a meta ball. I'm gonna choose the round shape, the ball there. That's gonna be my emitting object. That's um, gonna be my flame, basically. Just move it over there, get it out of the way for the moment. I'll move it back in a moment. Let's add our actual emitter. So this is gonna be a mesh. I'm gonna choose UV sphere. And I'm gonna delete most of this mesh. So I'm gonna jump into edit mode and just uh, select most of it. So almost all of the bottom half, I'm going to delete, get rid of it. So you are gone. That's because I only want them to be kind of emitted in this direction. All right, let's jump back to solid mode. Let's give this a name because at the moment it's called sphere. So let's call it emitter. And let's start emitting some particles. So I'm gonna hit our particle tab here and then hit plus. Now I'm gonna leave everything as default and I'm gonna drop down to our field weights. And this is where I'm gonna affect gravity to kind of make them go upwards instead of down. So let me play this with shift space. Now remember, it could be a different button for you, uh, but you can see our particles here, our halo particles are falling down. So I'm gonna reverse gravity, and rather than reverse it, I'm gonna make it super strong, to make it go upwards. So now, we kind of got these particles flying up, because at the moment, uh, all these particles are being ejected from the object at um, their normal angle. So say if a particle is ejected from here, it's gonna go in that direction. But because we have gravity, Gravity is gonna bend that and it's kinda of gonna go like that. But what if I could bend it a little bit more just to kind of stop them kind of fanning fanning out kind of like in this direction and I can kind of keep them a little bit more contained. I'm gonna add a lattice to bend these particles in just a little bit so we get kind of like a, a flame effect here. So the particles are gonna kind of convene in the middle, keep them nice and contained. So I'm gonna use a cheats way of doing that and I'm gonna use a lattice. So let me just play this and show you what I mean. So playing our animation and I'm gonna add a lattice. Let's just scale this up a little bit bigger and then scale on the Z axis um, and then move it into position. So I want this to be encasing our bottom area and this is going to be around where we want the top of the flame to be. So the first thing we need to do is add more divisions to this lattice. So in the data um, tab, I'm gonna change our W resolution up to four. And so now we've got um, more resolutions to play with or more segments. So let's attach this lattice to make it affect our object here. So just select these two things. Okay, it's being a little bit uh, finicky at the moment. Um, so I've selected the first one, then shift selected our lattice and then hit control P and choose a lattice to form. So what that's done is it's added um, uh, it as a modifier to this object here. So we've got our particle modifier and then we've got a lattice modifier underneath that. So let's change this um, now. So I'm gonna jump into edit mode for the lattice and just scale this down on the shift Z. So it's gonna scale it on everything except the Z axis. And you can see what it's doing is it's giving it, um, you can see these, these wide particles are kind of bending back inwards just to keep it nice and contained, which is more flame-like. 
Okay, that's good enough for now. So I made a little bit of a chimney there. Uh, now we're going to admit these metaballs from this emitter. Seems like a logical thing to do next. So jump back to our particles. Uh, let's close everything up, get it out of our way. So under the render tab here, let's open that up. It's set to render as halo. Let's change that to be object. So now we can choose the object that we want to be emitted. So let's go um, choose our meta ball. So you can see there's some particles kind of flying around here. Um, they're going quite weird. And that is because our scale is super, super tiny. So let's just change this to be 0.5. And you can see, aha, we've kind of got this blobby liquid floating upwards. Now this is closer to our goal, but we can make it a little bit closer. So uh, I'm going to change our scale randomness. That's what this one is here. Because I want some of those blobs to be smaller, some of them to be bigger. So let's just change that to be 0.5 as well. And there we go. We've got kind of a nice um, variation going on. And uh, because we're only using this as a guide, we're not actually rendering this or making this the final product. I want to give this a little bit uh, more of a shape. So I'm going to change the resolution of our meta balls. I'm going to raise the, the, the size of the resolution, which is going to make it more jagged. So I'm going to jump over to the data tab and rather than it being the resolution at 0.4, I'm going to change it to be 0.6. And you can see what happens if I actually just drag it up. You can see it's getting more um, jagged and kind of artifacty. Uh, is that a word? Artifacty? It is now. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that we have 0.6 there. And then just to keep it the same, I'm going to keep the, our, our resolution in our viewport and the render settings the same. Not that we are going to render this, but just it's a nice thing to do. All right, so now let's um, move our general ball back here. So this is going to be um, kind of where our flame is emitted from. We're just kind of, I want it, the, the shape to kind of stay here. But there's still a couple of problems with our particle settings at the moment. One is how high it goes. You can see, whoa, it's just going way too long. And when these particles are emitted, they kind of pop on a little bit too fast. So I'm going to fix them by adding a texture to the way these particles are emitted. So not uh, not adding a texture to the actual emitter, but to the particles themselves. So I'm going to select our emitter, and under our particles tab, down the bottom, you'll see textures. So this is where I'm going to add this texture. I'm just going to hit the new button, and you'll notice in my screen that it's going to uh, disappear straight away. It's going, to break, it's going to break it. So all my particles are now broken, but that's okay. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call it size and let's fix what this texture controls. So now one shortcut is to just click this button over here, which will jump you directly to where these um, texture, the settings for this texture are. So the first thing we need to change, and it's very important that we change this one, change it from image or movie to blend. Now that's gonna give us a, a, a color ramp here, but let's turn on our color ramp. So under colors, hit color ramp, and then uh, this, is now going to act as black being zero, which means off, and one being white means on. So let's actually reverse this so because we want the left-hand side to be white. So let's just raise this up so the alpha is one. Not that that's important, but it helps us see inside, but it helps us see what we're doing. Okay, so that's white. And then this one, I want this one to be black. So let's change the value down to black there. Uh, we're not quite done yet because this is not mapped to the correct thing. The next thing we want to do is change this the mapping uh, from generated mapping to strand or particle. So we're uh, mapping it along the path that these particles are taking rather than you know just a random mapping of the object. Now everything's disappeared, uh, which is okay because we need to control what this is mapped to. So the influence that it has at the moment, it's the general time. Uh, which we don't want it to be, so I'm going to turn that off. We want it to affect the size. And you can see now, um, actually, I just zoomed out a little bit. When I control this, I can actually control how high that flame is. So drag this down, it goes smaller. Drag it up, it goes bigger. So that's one way that we can control the flame. So that's really good. Um, now, I did mention that I want to kind of get rid of these popping shapes here. So what I'm going to do is drag this a little bit further down. I want to, just as they're emitted, I don't want them to be full size. I'm going to get them to grow to size. So that's going to help um, our spacing here. So I'm just going to add a new um, marker, drag this all the way to the left, and then I'm going to change our color to be about half size. So that's going to stop them popping so big. So they're going to flow out more, um, more naturally. So that's kind of 
looking good. So let's just zoom out here and have a look at what we've done there. Yeah, I think this is a great template to start from. So our next task is a little bit difficult, but what I need to do is look through this animation to see if I can spot a, a general shape that's going to repeat itself or that's close enough that I can manipulate by drawing it a little bit differently as it, as it loops. So uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a difficult task, but I know we're not actually looking at the whole thing. I'm just going to look at a portion of, of the shape. So for example, I'm just going to scrub through and I'm not looking at the whole thing. I'm just looking at one section. So um, let's just say uh, this shape here. See how this is kind of doing that. I'm going to scrub through and I'm going to see if I can see that general shape again and see if it kind of matches what it was. So um, that is close, but not quite. That is actually that's not too bad there. So what was that 9096? I just marked that and see if I can spot another place. Actually, and that's pretty good, 108. So do I want to go from 74 to 108? I probably The longer that you make it, uh, the more realistic it would look. But just for this tutorial, uh, I'm going to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to go to the shorter one. So what did I say? It was 90, 96. Okay, so this is going to be the end of my loop. So I'm going to hit Control uh, End, and that's going to make that the, the final frame. And then what frame was it? I think it was frame... 70, there we go, 74. I'm going to hit Control Home. So let's have a look play by playing this. Um, I'm now I'm looking at the whole thing, and I can see when it jumps back, but I reckon that's a good, um, it's not too big of a difference to be able to fix manually. Okay, so let's um, get ready to start drawing.